Chantal and welcome to my channel Sofa Serenity where I talk to you about my sewing journey. Welcome back if you're a regular viewer and if you're new here I hope you enjoy this vlog and consider subscribing. So welcome to this week's Friday Sews where I talk to you about what I've been doing in the world of sewing and what my plans are for next week. So I hope that's of interest to you. So happy Friday everybody. First of all I'm going to talk about what I'm wearing today. I'm wearing a mixture of ready made and me made so so i'm wearing a ready to wear top that i actually stole off my mum she was gifting it um to the charity shop and it's a gorgeous little polo neck um turtleneck in a red and it's really soft and i don't normally wear a lot of red but i just had to have it because as you know leopard print is my favorite color so yes there we go um and then i'm wearing it with the max t which was a recent make this is by chalk and notch it's absolutely gorgeous it's just right for this weather it's cold but obviously because i am of that age um that time of my life where i have hot flushes having my arms out seems to help me a bit so but this keeps my body warm so this is perfect so this was a recent make max t by chalk and notch and i made it in um, a very um cheap fabric that i got recently from somewhere at the knitting and stitching show but i can't remember what the name of the shop was because i don't think it actually had a name it was it was quite strange actually um but yes and i made this and i absolutely love it, it it's just ugh, i just feel so nice in it so yeah that's what i'm wearing today so then first of all i just wanted to say a massive thank you for all your feedback and comments around my gift to november vlog so i launched last week my gift to november vlog which is my plans and inspiration to support the challenge run by Adam Sews and Alison from Sew Like Dotty, who are running for the second year the challenge A Gift to November, which has some fabulous prizes. I'll link my vlog up here. I actually thought that my vlog was quite boring because it was around um, makeup bags and for girls, well, for teenagers really. Um, but the feedback's been really, really nice and people have really, really enjoyed it and found it really different to the other ones that are out there. So that's been really positive. So thank you guys for those comments. It means a lot. Right then, let's move on to what I've been making. So first of all, let me show you my pyjamas. If you watched last week's Friday shows, you'll know that I was had a bit of fun and games with these pyjamas. They were quite, um, let me say, challenging for no other reason than I kept going wrong. So I, these are, sorry, these have been washed, but they're not ironed, so they're a bit creased. But these are my Sew Over It Ultimate Pyjamas. I will put a picture in for you. Um, I've got the fabric from Hey Sew Sister, so I actually used a Hey Sew Sister label that I had from ages and ages ago and put that in the back. Um, I used a leopard print um, ribbon to go in the, as the drawstring because I managed to find my buttonhole foot which was holding me back from getting these sewn up. So you can see there's my uh, buttonholes, I've got elasticated waist and I actually did French seams throughout. Look at these French seam babies. I mean, they're quite big French seams, but you know, I'm not an expert on them yet, but they are a really lovely finish. So really, really happy with those. And then, I had some of this waffle knit fabric in my stash. I only had a meter, and initially I wanted to make the Maya, no, the Myla, Mila, Mila sweatshirt from Tammy Handmade, but I didn't have enough for it. So in the end, I opted for um, another Tammy Handmade pattern, which was the Naya shirt. Which again, this is a bit creased, so apologies. But um, I made this up with the waffle knit that I had in my stash. I put one of my lovely labels that I got from Grace for my birthday that says you are loved and these are the comfiest pyjamas, I've lived in them. I was a little bit lazy and I used black overlecker thread which is not the best really, I should have really used um, an orangey colour or a, or a mustardy colour but yeah I'm really really happy with these pyjamas, they are dead comfy and I will definitely be making some more of these. And the nail top works really well as a comfortable pyjama top. I think the only difference, the only change that I'll make for next time is I will put in some pockets and I might opt to just not bother with the drawstring. They're not really required um, because you've got elastic in the waist, but they're there as well. Um, and they are a full working drawstring. I haven't done that with these ones. I've just put the drawstring in for show. Um, so I haven't threaded it all the way around the back. I've just threaded it through the two eye holes. Eye holes, button holes. 
So the next thing that I've been doing is I've been having a little bit of a sewing pyjama party. And that's not sewing in my pyjamas, although I do do that. <laughs> this is making up some pyjamas for me and the girls. So I got this fabric last year from my lovely friend Anna, who is You Got Me In Stitches, and she ran fabric store um, which is called pattern pouch nest and this jersey is the softest jersey i have ever felt in my life it's 12 pound a meter and she still has this in stock um, now i ordered five meters of this and i had to put a rush order in this week for some more um, because i actually ran out so i actually in total have used seven and a half meters of this fabric um, but i haven't finished the pajamas off yet because that only came the other day now i have sewn up last night um the trousers and the top for alice i haven't hemmed it yet and i've done all of the all of the trousers and i've done a couple of the sides of the top but i've still got to cut out the sleeves so i'm doing the juno pajamas which are the pajamas by tilly and the buttons now I went with these because I've made these before. I've got a couple of pairs. I can pop pictures in. Now, although I did make these in a size three because I was much slimmer then when I made them. Um, so I knew that I needed to reprint out the pattern in um, a size five or six. And also I needed to um, have the size one for the girls, which is the smallest size. So the Tilly and the Buttons Juno Pajamas is in the Keep It Simple book, is it? I'm just checking here. The make it simple book what i didn't realize when i purchased this book is that although the patterns are all in the back in paper form you can actually download them so i've downloaded the pdf of the the juno pajamas and printed them out and for the girls i've made the size one which is the smallest size in the trousers and the top because i i got them to try on my size three and although um my size three pajamas were quite baggy on them they fit them in the length because my girls are quite tall I don't know where they get it from. I think, well, I do. They get it from their dad because their dad's tall. Um, so I thought they like it a little bit oversized. They like long sleeves because they like to do this with their hands and stuff. So we've gone with the size one, but I can always trim trim a little bit off if they're too big for them, but I think it'll be fine. And then for me, I made the size six. I fell into the between the five and the six, but I don't like a tight fit in my pyjamas, so I sized up to a six. Um, and cut those out also cut out the, the juno pajama t-shirt top and again done the size six for me and the size one for the girls in this fabric so i haven't got those to show you yet because they're not finished i need to um put the sleeves on and everything but i have pretty much finished alice's version so for alice obviously i didn't do the juno pajamas i have gone with the um waves and wild raglan tee which is a staple favorite of mine and it is so cute so i've still got to hem it um the sleeves and the and the bottom but you can get the gist of what it looks like I made the size three to four in that and I owned an arm between the harem pants and the lightning leggings but I ended up going for the harem pants because Alice is still in a nappy at night time and this gives you really loads of nice room for that big full nappy which makes for the morning these actually look really big but I know that they will fit her um, so I made the harem pants and the great thing about the harem pants is they have no hemming because they have cuffs on the bottom and they have a waistband with jersey on the top and she I've made these for her before and she loves them. I've got a little label here that is another one of those ones that Grace got me says you are loved and I haven't actually sewn that in yet so that needs to happen but that honestly I cannot tell you how lovely and soft this fabric is and actually this retails at 40, most places £14 a metre, but Anna is selling it for £12 a metre. So if you want to get yourself a couple of metres of this, I don't think she's got loads left, but you head, I'll put a link into it on the website. They also have a matching um, polar fleece, which is in a grey, which I um denied about buying to make like matching like Christmas hoodies in. Um, but yeah, budget wouldn't, wouldn't stretch to that, I'm afraid. I must say, I use my new overlocker. Here she is the wonderful victory and can i just say it's so amazing it's brilliant obviously i'm going to do a full review on this um for you all but oh she is such a dream and changing the thread now is just so easy i cannot tell you how easy it is um i literally 
just change the thread all the time so yesterday I had black on it I just swapped it last night to white and I just don't obviously it's still a chore because no one wants to change their overlocker thread but it actually takes seconds to do and in fact I'm contemplating timing myself to see how fast I can actually do it in but yes I'm loving I'm loving my victory and no she will not be going back I will be purchasing this so yes beans on toast for tea for the kids for the next six months I think <laughs> And the third and final bit of sewing that I did is my weird fabric, which you can just see out your corner of your eyes. So this is the Danny by Seamwork. And this is the pinafore that if you watched me last week, you'll know that I twirled. And um, I was glad I did do that because I ended up sizing down. I did an eight on the top, graded to a 10 on the hip, on the waist, and I've graded out to a 12 on the hip. So eight, 10, 12 and i am so happy with how this has turned out i mean the symmetry is beautiful if i do so so myself and um, i had a bit of a serendipitous kind of situation with this and let me just explain so what i didn't realize was this middle this front piece is cut not cut on the fold and i ended up cutting on the fold which is great because i've got some lovely symmetry i made sure that the girls were all lined up on both sides of the fold um but then what actually happened is because I obviously didn't cut it on the fold, I had a seam allowance in there, which I hadn't took into account. So what I actually did to counteract this, because the lining on the inside, I did cut up, did cut um, separately. So that does have a seam line down the middle. And obviously they wouldn't match because there would be um, seam allowance out in the middle. So what I did was I just, I just increased the dart here and here so that the lining and the um, main fabric fitted together. And I'm actually really happy with that. And I suggest, unless you want that seam line as a design feature, if you um, have got a pattern like this that you want to get symmetrical, I would recommend you cutting on the fold, but just cutting off that seam allowance. And that's what I'd do next time. Um, I haven't sewn the sign seams up yet. I've just done that for fitting purposes, but I'm so happy with it. It's looking so weird, but in a good way. Let me just show you the lining because the lining is such a clever um, technique that I've not done before. It still could do with a good press um, as well. But this is the doc document, the garment even turned inside out. And as you can see, it's got a facing on the lining and uh, that's the front. So you can see almost looks as good on the inside as it does on the outside so basically i used a i think this is like a twill fabric um it's the only fabric i had really in my stash because it tends to take quite a lot of lining fabric and the difference on this is you cut out a facing and a lining and obviously the lining is slightly smaller um, by the difference in the facings to the main fabric and then you sew the facings onto the main fabric no you don't you sew the facings onto the lining um, which then makes the lining the same size as the main fabric i hope that's making sense and it's just really nice first of all it doesn't roll out because you i've um tops i've uh, edge stitched that there under stitched it even um and it's just a really nice professional finish i think it looks really really cute on the inside so i really like that technique i've got the skirt still to do with the pockets and i've got to sew up the side seams but i'm not going to sew the side seams up yet until i've got the skirt part done because i want to just check fit around it um it's the burrito method inside so it's really really neat bodice and i'm really really happy with that and i cannot wait to get this finished and i would really love to wear it um next weekend so that's all the actual sewing that i've done i have cut out my lavender robe by alice and co patterns that is in this flannel fabric and i have great ideas around this i'm going to be using my merry christmas sew on patch and this is all for my brand ambassador ship window display for so confident in glasgow now i have been thinking that i might might maybe put a bit of sherpa on the collar of this if i've got enough left in my stash we'll see i'm going to go and have a look later if i've got enough sherpa in my um stash to perhaps do the collar of the of the 
robe in a shirt because I think that would be even more snuggly but we'll see I don't know yet watch your space so I'm going to a sewing social tomorrow it's Becky's from what Beck sews hers is monthly last weekend of the month so I'll be going to that and I'm going to be taking that robe with me to get that done because I actually do need to get that finished this weekend and sent off to um, the guys at Sew Confidence so they can put it in the window display so that leads me nicely into my plans so that's what I'll be doing on Saturday which I'm very very excited about and then the plans for the week ahead are going to be um, getting all these ones that I've just talked about finished off and uh, perhaps starting a bit of work on one of my new patterns that I've purchased so that's a good segue into what I've been spending my money on this week so I've had some happy mail this week the first happy mail is beyond the pink door advent calendar very excited I mean look at that box isn't it lovely I can smell it already there's obviously something beautifully smelly in there this is going to be my advent calendar for the 12 days of Christmas so we do have to open this on the 1st of December, I believe, but then there's instructions on how to make this last the 24 days. I suppose we're opening one every other day or something like that, I don't know. But you'll be pleased to know that Alice has agreed to do Vlogmas this year. I know, I know. I didn't know if I could get her, but she is happy to do it as long as she has a chocolate calendar. So Alice has a chocolate calendar and I have my Beyond the Pink Door calendar um, to open at Vlogmas. Now I also have um, got another calendar coming and that is going to be the lovely Anna's from Pattern Pouch Nest. She has done this beautiful calendar. I will put the link to um, the display of her calendar because I'll tell you what, it's absolutely beautiful. She has actually hand sewn the calendar itself and then there's also the treats inside. So um, let me link that in the notes below because she still have some left and there is still time to get yours sent out. So if you are interested, I will pop a link down below and get your order in if you've missed out on, especially if you've missed out on one of these Beyond the Pink Door ones and you don't want to be paying £120 for Fabric Godmother one, then this is a great alternative. I haven't actually been on the lives with Andrea for, I don't know, months because I just haven't been able to get on them because Alice is going to bed a little bit later now. So I used to be in bed and then I used to be able to watch it. Um, but now she stays up till about half past seven and I always miss the live. But I did manage to get on the other day and it was a good reminder of why it's good for me not to go on because straight away I was in love with some fabric and I popped it in my basket. So um, I did have a voucher with Beyond the Pink Door because they do a rewards scheme for how much you spend with them. So I had a £12 voucher so that did help. But she, um, those of you who are all over Instagram and YouTube will know that um, Nareda Hansen has, um, I'm probably saying that wrong, has just launched some new fabrics and this fabric was one that just caught my eye i'm dead in love with um lilac at the moment but it's not a color that really suits me but it there there seems to be a bit of a trend of mixing it with some of the more neutral tones that i do love so the olive greens the um rust colors the ochre colors and you've probably seen a couple of fabrics that i've purchased recently that have got that lilac mixed with the colors that are in my color palette and this one i just couldn't resist and i think i got three meters of it but this is the fabric and it's got this cool like very light peachy pink color with the green olive citrus kind of color and then this lilac and i just love it and i love the big check and oh just had to have to have it so i've got this in my stash i have no plans for it so there is three meters there because we all know that's my rule um and I think it will be one of those fabrics that goes in the stash for a special occasion. I think it's probably more summer um, fabric than an autumnal fabric, but it's, I think it's a, is it a viscose? Oh, I can't remember what fabric base it was on, but I'll put it on because it was an unusual one and it's just really lovely and soft, but um, yeah. And a lot of these fabrics have sold out now. So I'm very, very happy that I got this large gingham fabric. So that was my happy pose from Beyond the Pink Door. And then I also have purchased a couple of patterns. The one pattern that I've purchased is the Danny pattern, um, which is the Atelier Jupe new like uh, teddy fleece jacket pattern. I'll put a, um, a picture of it. Now I absolutely love the fabric that this was made in, but I think it's probably sold out everywhere and it's very expensive. But I don't know about you, I have been bombarded this week with the, with the Black Friday sales. Um, 
and whether you agree with it or don't agree with it obviously it's a sale isn't it so um i've been really really good and resisted i had a little rule that i wasn't going to succumb to any um sales that were under 25 percent um so the normal 20s and the 15s that i've avoided but fabric godmother have done a fantastic 25% off their fabric sale I think there was 15% off their patterns and 10% off their advent calendars and um, so I succumbed the other day and I purchased three fabrics that I've had my eye on for a while but not bought them because of the cost of them now the first one was one that I'd seen Josie wearing I think she'd made the fiber mood zip up top which I cannot remember what it's called so and I loved it, but it was like £22 a metre, um, which, you know, is a very pricey fabric, but it's still in stock. Um, I think they did sell out of it, but they got it back in stock and I decided to pop this in my basket. So I had that one. I also purchased the Christmas satin fabric, which is like the ball ball fabric. I'll put a picture of it on there. Again, had my eye on that one for a while and... Um, really really want it for christmas day i mean i have so many christmas day dresses that i want to make but i think this one's top of the pops now um now i know what dress i want to make with this i've forgotten the blooming name of it but it's a mason fauve dress and it's a gorgeous high neck very a-line dress but the party is definitely in the back it's got a nice v in the back and you can tailor the v so you can cover your bra up as well so i want to get that one and it's one of the older patterns so it is on pdf so i will be purchasing that at some point i was hoping they were going to do a sale so i was holding out for them to do one but we'll see um and then the final fabric is the fabric that I have purchased to make this Danny jacket and it is a dog tooth or hound's tooth, whatever you want to say, in an absolute massive print in a caramel colour. So I've purchased that fabric as well um, and did succumb to the 25% sale but I'm very, very happy with my purchases. Um, so yeah, they are coming hopefully soon. Um, I'm sure they'll be very busy with the 25% sale so no doubt it might be a delay so it might be here next week for me to show you but if not i've told you about it now full disclosure of my fabric addiction and the other pattern that i purchased is one i have been waiting and waiting and waiting for and i purchased it last night printed it off last night and stuck it together this morning before i started work and i want to make this up i just need to find the perfect fabric it needs three meters of fabric so i don't Although I have started to build up my stash with the three metres of fabric, I don't have copious choice for that. Um, but it is the Seasons of Ease new pattern, which I think was a little bit delayed. So it's more being launched in the winter than the autumn. But it is Seasons of Ease autumn in New York pattern. And I love it. It's getting mixed reviews from people that I talk to about it because it is a has got no sleeves. But I really see this pattern over this turtle, like a turtleneck like this. And the thing that I love about it is it's got these frills on the side, which I love. And it's got these go days, which I've never done that before. So a go day is like um, kind of a massive flare. Is that what you say? I'm sure that's not the technical term. Let me Google what, Google what a go day is. So a go day is a triangular piece of material inserted in a dress, shirt or glove to make it flared. Okay, so it's got these lovely flares that have also got a frill on them and I love a frill um, and it's a straight tunic style and I'm really keen on to, to make this up because it is my style, I like loose fitting clothes, I don't like tight fitting clothes. Sorry, I don't know what that was, I think it was someone at the door. But yes, I don't like tight fitting clothes, this is just my style so I'm really excited to get this made up so I would like to try and get on with this next week if I have enough time. Um, but I will be... Um, going to so two next week so it might be the, the thing that I take with me to make up there but we'll see we'll see um but yeah that is another pattern that is out now and I have purchased it on pdf although I will probably purchase it on paper because I love the seasons and east of east patterns they're just so nice um and I feel like I, my collection addiction is kicking in where I want to have every one of the collection in my stash but we'll see okay so I think that's everything i'm sure i always come off and off again oh that's it i want to do a small channel shout out um so i just wanted to say sam from sequin girly creates and the lovely christine from gemini stitcher they have started a bit of a movement across across instagram called hashtag small sewing channel where it's for channels that are under 2000 subscribers to um 
get themselves tagged into that and then it's thought people can start to give shout outs and especially some of the larger channels i don't know if i'm a larger channel but i've definitely got more than 2,000 subscribers so i want to help out shout out where i can um so i wanted to give a shout out to um under that hashtag my sewing shout out goes to a lovely lady called annette who is in my sewing social i think it's catching because this is a third person in my sewing social to have started a vlog um i'm very very proud of them and it's um her name's Annette and, and her channel's called Net Sews. She's just recently changed it to Net Sews. Um, and I will put the link below. She's got quite a few vlogs out, but she's a new vlogger. So if you're looking on the lookout for a new vlogger, please head over and give her some love, give her a subscribe. And if you don't also follow Christine or Sam, please head over and give them a like and subscribe as well. Right then, that is it now, I think okay so i hope you've enjoyed this vlog and um, if you don't subscribe already please click the subscribe button now i would love to get to 5,000 subscribers by christmas but i've got a way to go but any help you can get me to push me there would be great um and if you've liked this video click the like button because that helps get my content out there to people that perhaps don't know about me yet and if you want to support my channel further i do have a ko account where you can buy me a virtual coffee Okay, I hope you have a brilliant week sewing and I'll see you all soon. Happy sewing!